Welcome back. This is the second part of our lecture on location management. In this lecture, we will try to figure out how in some cases the identity of a particular entity can be mapped to its location. Okay. So, last time we had a look at MAC addresses and IP addresses. We will just quickly have a look at uh, what they were. So, MAC addresses are something that comes in built from the manufacturer and uh, IP addresses are something that are assigned by a system when a device connects to the network. The MAC address is actually a constant for a device, you know it, it, it ideally should never change. However, we talked about that it can be spoofed at the software level. The IP addresses may actually change from network to network. So, if a device connects to a different network, it may be given a different IP address and uh, even on the same network if it is reconnect, it is possible that the IP address may change. The duplicate MAC addresses may cause some problems on the network you know they can probably cause some havoc at the lower levels of routers and switches and all that stuff. But in general the network will still probably continue to work. In case of duplicate IP addresses though the system will, will take an action and then it will kick out either all the uh, erring entities or it will simply keep one entity and, and you know kick out the others. So, basically at the end only one entity with one IP address will be able to uh, you know sustain itself on network and others will be kicked out. So, th that is why IP addresses are al almost always unique in fact always unique on the network. Okay, now, we are going to talk about identity that can be mapped to location. So, we have already talked about what identities are in the previous lectures you know, and uh, we talked about what addresses are. Now, we are going to have a look at how in some cases these addresses can actually be translated to locations. So, we will just have a review of something that we called location of wire devices. Okay. We talked about uh, something called a library computer or say workstation 10 in the ground floor. We said that if a computer is connected to a LAN cable and that uh, LAN socket is say you know in, in library or something, we can uh, actually fix the location of the computer because of the fact that it is a wired device. Right? Uh, we still did not say anything about exactly how can a particular LAN socket be mapped to an address or you know how, how, how can just by uh, having look at a particular device's uh, IP address or some other address, how can we say this is the device which is the library computer or the workstation. Okay. So, now we are going to have a look at this. So, whenever a device connects to a network, if the network somehow enforces a rule that it will always be given a particular address, then we can have some kind of a mapping between device and address. right? We are still not talking about location, but yeah, we can somehow fix a mapping between device and IP address. Okay. So, let us take an example of the library computer that we were talking about. Let us just say any computer which connects to the network from the library is given the IP address say 172.27.18.33. Okay. So, once we are able to somehow enforce this rule, we are pretty much sure that any device with this particular IP address on my network is in library right because i have i have enforced a rule any any device connecting to library will get this particular ip address so on my network all i need to check is if any device is having this address i am pretty much sure that it is the library computer only okay because i have somehow enforced a ruling we we, have, we haven't yet talked about how that enforcement can be done uh, let's just assume that there is some way i can enforce a particular ip address on a particular lan socket but uh, basically there are there are techniques available to do that so, if I can somehow ensure that uh, the library socket, uh, any device connecting to that will get the same IP address. In future, whenever I see that IP address on my network, I am pretty much sure that it is the device connecting from library. right? Okay. The next thing is mapping these addresses to geolocations. So, we had a talk about how I can probably fix a particular IP address to a socket. So, if that particular socket is being used by any device, I can clearly say that that particular device is actually connecting from that particular location. Now, this mapping need not just be at a very micro level. Okay, Right now, we just talked about uh, locations within a say uh, an institute or something. These can actually be done at a much, much, much higher level as well. So, we can do these things on city level, on, on, on state level. They can actually be, be done on any, any level we want. Okay. So, we just saw how a particular IP address could be mapped to a location if we somehow enforce this rule in the network, but that solution is not very neat right because uh, we need to define these mappings at a very you know very very micro level we have got to figure out addresses for all the LAN sockets in my 
institute probably and then I could be sure that any device connecting to that uh, LAN socket will get this particular IP address and with the help of this IP address I will be able to identify the device. But this mapping is, is not very neat, okay. But what we can probably do is uh, we can have it have some kind of you know both ways we can try to do little bit of mapping and then leave the things dynamically as well. So we will we'll come back to this but before that what we are going to do is uh, we will have a look at so we saw that if an address is attached to a location somehow then uh, we can actually know the location of a particular device with that address right because we have mapped it. So for example in the previous case we saw that if a particular IP address is mapped to this LAN socket in library whenever we see a device with that particular IP address we will be pretty much sure it is in library okay. But IP addresses are not always fixed to locations right you know maybe we can clearly say they are not fixed to precise locations like a library socket. Uh, so in an institute they may actually use an addressing scheme which assigns every connecting device an address from a particular pool right. So now we are just uh, going to concentrate on a pool of addresses we are not going to fix particular addresses to particular sockets we are just going to give the devices an address from a given pool okay. So we are not going to do some kind of hard fixing of addresses. Now this addressing scheme is called dynamic addressing scheme okay and, and uh, what we just saw before you know for the library computer was static addressing scheme. Now in general a range of IP addresses can still be mapped to a particular area. Again we are not going to talk about how exactly these rules can be enforced just, just assume that there are hardware and software solutions which can assign certain range of IP addresses to you know devices connecting from a certain uh, say building or something. So there are, there are solutions available for doing that we are not going to go in technical details of it. But uh, so what we are going to say is for example devices that connect to a network from the academic block will get an IP address in this particular range. 172.27.18.1 to 172.27.18.200. Now assume that we get a particular device with the IP address say 172.27.18.15 okay. Now we are pretty much sure that this device is from the academic block because its IP address is in this particular range. We really do not know where in academic block the device is but yeah because we enforced the rule that all devices in this particular building called academic block will get address from this range. We can still say that any device having an address within this range is going to be from academic block where we do not know but from academic block. So in such a scenario a device with a particular IP address can still be located I would say not precisely located but they, it can still be located okay. So within a, a particular block a particular building so what we have actually done is this done this mapping at a much more higher level instead of doing it for a particular socket we are not doing it for buildings so blocks right. Now this may not just be you know restricted to a level of an institute you know it can actually this kind of mappings can be done for localities, cities, states, countries it can actually be done even at the continent level. So I will give you an example if you see any IP address on internet in this particular range you know 103.24.48.02, 103.24.48.25 then it has to be a device connecting from Kanpur. So because this IP range has been assigned to Kanpur. Similarly the range 103.255.733.73.0 is allocated to Lucknow. So any device on internet with an IP address in this range is connecting from Lucknow surely okay. So basically there is a global database of such mappings and uh, these are available at different levels. They are available at locality, city, state levels, country level. So if you have that particular database with you with the help of that database if you are given a particular IP address on internet you can actually tell the location of that particular device you know that particular entity. So there are many websites which can actually tell you the location of a particular IP address I have given one here www.iplocation.net there are actually many others like these. So one, one of the homeworks in this particular uh, lecture is to figure out your IP address and see where your location is. The last part of this lecture is about local address okay. So we just saw in the case of the library computer that the library computer was assigned an, an address like 172.27.18.33. Now the problem is that uh, even though the all the uh, all the things that we studied right now they are equally applicable say on a local network within an institute 
or say on the internet, but uh, the addresses which can actually be assigned to a device on intranet, intranets are actually the internal networks, we call them intranets, just like internet is the network we connect to, intranets are the networks which are internal to a particular organization. So, there are certain IP address ranges that are fixed for the use within an organization and they are not used on internet. Okay? So, these are called local addresses. So, one example of such is any particular IP address that starts with 10. Okay? So, 10 dot anything dot anything dot anything, they are addresses which are only used within an intranet. You will never find a device on internet which will have this kind of an address, you know, which starts with 10. So, this is actually an example of local address. So, there are some ranges allocated in the IP address domain which are only applicable to say intranets. right? Now, a network administrator can actually make use of these ranges and uh, it can actually apply some kind of local mappings. We talked about you know mappings in which a particular set of IP addresses are reserved for say academic block. Uh, these are actually uh, achieved using something called subnets. Subnets are basically sub networks. So, a network administrator can actually use these IP addresses and then he can divide it in you know partitions or something and uh, one particular partition can go to say academic block, one particular partition can go to say hostels, uh, another one can go to say you know lecture halls and all that stuff. So, uh, basically subnets are something which are used you know very commonly by network administrator to actually partition the IP address ranges. Now, these are actually used on internet as well, but uh, for now we are just going to concentrate on their mappings that we saw in the case of an institute, okay? but, but this, this can pretty much be done on internet as well, you know you can actually uh, assign subnets and basically this is how uh, all the stuff works, you know the mappings we saw on the basis of continents and, and cities and, 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 and states, they are all done using subnets. Okay? So, a particular sub network is going to be uh, assigned to a particular geolocation. Okay, we will just have a quick recap of what we did in this particular lecture. The location of entities interacting with a system can be determined using techniques such as GPS and uh, multilateration. So, GPS was a technique which, is, which makes use of satellites and multilateration is something that is done by the mobile service provider. Another way by which entities uh, can actually be identified first on the system is their IP address, you know this is the uh, identity of a particular entity and then these uh, IP addresses can then be mapped to a particular location using a universal database. Okay? So, this database is uh, something which stores some kind of mappings. So, with the help of this database you can actually pinpoint and tell me where a particular device is. Okay? And uh, the last thing we saw was is that an organization can use certain set of IP addresses to define local addresses and uh, these were the local uh, address ranges. Okay, so, homework. So, we talked about uh, local addresses right? and uh, we, we saw that any IP address that starts with 10 is actually a local address. Uh, well, there are some more uh, local address ranges. So, what you can do is probably just find them out. Okay. So, there are basically there are three local address ranges. Uh, one I already told you, there are two others, just find them out. The other thing is uh, try to find out your own IP address. Okay? So, there are some commands in operating systems which can actually do that for you. For example, in Windows it is a command called ipconfig. If you are using Linux or Mac, you can use ifconfig. Um, just use these commands and find out what your IP address is. Then you can go to any particular website which can map the IP address to location. Okay? One example is iplocation.net. So, go there and try to figure out what your particular uh, IP address is and what location it is getting mapped to. IPlocation.net by the way can, can, can do that for you. It will on its home page it will show you your, uh, your IP address as well as your location. Now, what you have to do is match whether the IP address that you are seeing on this particular website matches the one that you saw in ipconfig, you know, whether they are same or not. If uh, they are not same, for some people it would not be same by the way, you need to figure out the address that you saw with IP config, is there anything special about that address? There would be something special by the way. Okay? So, just figure out what it is and uh, you will be able to figure out something more about location management with the help of this. That address may not be something that is used on internet. Okay? So, just try to figure out what that is. Okay? So, this is the end of the lecture on location management. Okay? Thank you.